When you shoot a basketball, what is really happening in your muscles? The axon outline in blue is where a large depolarization, also known as an action potential, travels down the axon until it arrives at the end of the axon, known as the synaptic knot. Once the action potential arrives at the synaptic knob, calcium channels open, allowing calcium to flood into the axon. After calcium enters the axon, it makes its way down and forces acetylcholine to the end of the synaptic bulb. From there, the acetylcholine fuses with the cell membrane and is released into the synaptic cleft through exocytosis. Once the acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft, it binds to the receptor sites on the motor end plate. After acetylcholine attaches to the receptors on the motor end plate, sodium potassium channels are opened, allowing the sodium to flood into the sarcolemma. The increase of sodium ions in the sarcolemma creates a large depolarization, sending an action potential down the sarcolemma. The action potential continues down the sarcolemma where it enters the T-tubule. Once the action potential has entered the T-tubule, calcium ions are released from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum where the calcium ions have been stored from the molecule calcisequestrin. Inside skeletal muscle are fascicles, and a fascicle is a bundle of myofibers. Inside a myofiber are myofibrils, which are made of thin and thick filaments. Thick filaments are composed of myosin. Thin filaments are composed of actin, which contain the active site, tropomyosin, which cover the active site, and troponin, which pull the tropomyosin off of the active site so the myosin head can attach to the actin. The calcium that was released from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum travel over to the troponin and attach. Once the calcium is attached to the troponin, the tropomyosin gets pulled off of the actin, exposing the active site. The myosin head in its low energy state is releasing ADP. When the actin has the active site exposed, the myosin head jumps over to the actin, forming a cross bridge. When the myosin forms the cross bridge, it creates sliding between the thick and thin filaments. After each sliding motion, ATP, which is largely produced in the mitochondria, unbinds the myosin head from the actin, where the myosin re-enters its low energy state. The process repeats itself until the muscle contraction is complete. The sarcomere is the basic functional unit of skeletal muscles. Within the sarcomere, there are A-bands and I-bands. The A-bands are around the edge, and those are composed of thick filaments. The I-bands are in the center, and they are composed of thin filaments. Here's a closer view of when thin and thick filaments slide and muscles contract. The acetylcholine pop off of the receptors and are broken down by acetylcholine esterase so they can go back into the axon. It's unbelievable what happens in the small amount of time it takes for our muscles to contract.